Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. In the previous part we saw how to use buttons in Kiwi. The button is a really common Kiwi widget. In this part I'd like to touch upon all the other widgets that we'll be making use of, so toggle button, checkbox, text input and slider. You can also read the written version of this video on my Python programming blog at prospercoder.com. Let's start with the checkbox widget. The checkbox is a two-state button that can be either checked or unchecked. Later, we'll see that it can be used as a radio button as well, if it's in a group. But for now, let's just have a look at a single checkbox. The main property of a checkbox is active, which is true if it's checked, and false otherwise. The basic checkbox event is unactive, which is fired if the state of the checkbox changes. So, in our main.py file, let's replace our button from the previous part with a checkbox. So, from kiwi.uix.checkbox import checkbox. And now we want to return a checkbox, not a button. Fine. And now here is the Kiwi file. So now we're using the checkbox class, not button. And the checkbox should be checked. So we don't need this code. Let's just set the active property to true. Save. Go back to main.py. If you run the main.py file, you will see a checked box over here in the app window. And now you can uncheck it and check it again to see how it works. Fine. Now let's make the checkbox do something when its state changes. For now, something as simple as printing out a message in the terminal will do. So let's add the unactive event. And here, all we want to do is print this message to the terminal. State changed. So save, go to main.py, and run the program again. Now try checking and unchecking the checkbox several times. Each time you do, you will see a state changed message here in the terminal. Have a look. State changed. State changed. And so on. Now, the next widget I'd like to discuss is the toggle button, which shares features with both the regular button and the checkbox. It looks like a button at first glance, but when you press it, it remains pressed, just like the checkbox remains checked when you check it. So it's a two-state button as well. The two states are normal and down. You can set the state of the button to normal or down using the state property. You can use the onState event if something should happen when the state changes. Besides, you can set the text property as you did with the regular button. Also, just like checkboxes, toggle buttons may be grouped so that only one toggle button may be in down state, which means pressed, at a time in a group. But this is beyond the scope of this introductory video. Creating and using a toggle button is easy. Let's remove the code responsible for the checkbox we just created 
and let's add a toggle button. So here we need from kiwi.uix dot toggle button import toggle button and naturally we want to return a toggle button this time and now the kiwi file we need a toggle button and now let's get rid of this The toggle button has the text property, just like a regular button. So let's set it to something like not pressed. Now the state is by default normal. So this line of code is redundant, but still let's type it in state normal. Now we want the text on the toggle button to change if its state changes. So we need the unstate event. Here we can use a ternary if operator. So self.text, which means the text property on this button, on the instance of the button. Text so self.text equals not pressed if self state equals normal else pressed. Well, this is just a typical Python construct the ternary if statement. So this should be set to this value if this condition is met. Otherwise, this should be set to this value. Nothing special about this. Now let's save it and let's run our app. Now this is a toggle button with the text not pressed. If I now press the button and release, it remains pressed. And the text changed to pressed because now it's in a down state. When I press it again, it will go back to the normal state and the text will change again. This event was fired because the state changed. Fine, the next widget I'd like to briefly discuss is the text input. There's much more I could write about this widget than about all the other widgets so far. However, I'm not going to do that, at least not just yet. The text input widget is going to be used later in our project, so I will discuss all the properties and events that we need in due time. For now, let me just concentrate on the very basics. So a text input is a widget in which the user can enter text. Then our program can use this text in one way or another, depending on what we need. The text input widget may allow multi-line text or just a single line of text. If you need the latter, just set the multi-line property to false. The text property is used for the text in the text input widget. And there may be also a hint text, which is visible when the widget contains no text. This is usually used as a prompt as to what sort of data is expected in the widget. To set the hint text, you use the hint text property. There are tons of other properties which I'm not going to discuss now. There are also tons of events which you can use if some text is entered, when it's validated, when the widget gets focus, and so on. Okay, so let's have a look at a simple example with a multi-line text input first. Here's the Python code. The first thing to do is to import the text input class from Kiwi UI X text input import text input and also return in the build method 
text input. Fine. And now the Kiwi file. So first of all, we need the text input class. Let's get rid of this. Let's set the text property to Hello Darkness, my old friend. Here you can see two new line characters. So this is going to be multi-line text. Now the multi-line property is by default set to true. So the following line of code is actually redundant. Multi-line true. But let's use it anyway. And then let's add some hint text. Like for example, type some lyrics. Okay, this is a prompt. Let's save it. And let's run the program. Now, here's our text input widget. It fills the whole window again. Here we have the text. Hello darkness, my old friend. With these two new line characters having taken effect. Now click anywhere inside the widget. And now you can edit the text. In order to move to a new line, just need to hit enter. And now delete all the text. And you will see the hint text that we set in the Kiwi file. Okay. And now suppose we want to only allow single line text. All you have to do is set the multi-line property to false. And also, let's remove the new line characters. Hello darkness, my old friend. Because this is going to be a single line of text. Let's save it. Let's run it. And if you now try to edit the text, you will notice that the enter key no longer lets you go to a new line. Enter. Actually, what it now does is make the text input widget lose focus and validate the text entered in it. But in our case, there isn't any validation code, so there's nothing to validate. But if you delete the text, you will see the hint text again. There's much more to text inputs than that. But let me now move on to the last widget I'd like to introduce in this video, the slider. The slider looks like a scroll bar. You can use it to set a value between a minimum and a maximum value. The main properties of a slider are min, max, and value, which you can use to set the just mentioned values. The min and max properties are self-explanatory. The value property is the default value. Besides, sliders may be oriented horizontally, which is the default value, or vertically, depending on what you set the orientation property to. So this is enough for us to know how to create a simple slider. Let it be a horizontal slider with values between negative 100 and 200 and with a default value of 0. First, the Python file, so we need the slider now. From kv.uax.slider import slider and we want the slider to be returned. And now the Kiwi file. We now need the slider class. Let's remove all this. And now let's set the min and max values, which should be negative 100 and 200 respectively. So min, negative 100, max, 200. Now, the default value should be zero. Value zero. Now, the default orientation is horizontal, so we don't need this line of code, but of course, it will do no harm if it's there. So, orientation is 
horizontal. Save, and let's run the app again. And now you can see the slider. It again occupies the whole window and it's set to zero. This is the value zero. Here we have negative 100, here we have 200, and this is zero. Of course, you can slide the slider to the left or to the right. And now change the orientation to vertical. Just this one change. Save, run again. And now the slider goes vertically from negative 100 over here to 200 over here. And the default value was zero. Fine, this was the last widget I wanted to discuss in this video. There are lots of other widgets which are available out of the box in Kiwi, but I'd like to talk about layouts now. As you probably noticed, there has always been just one single widget in our application. At first, there was a label. Then we got rid of the label and created a button. Then we replaced the button with a checkbox, and so on. But usually, even the most trivial apps have more than one widget. In our project, there's definitely going to be more. So in order to place more widgets in our app, you have to lay them out somehow. Kiwi uses a couple of predefined layouts that you can use. They are pretty flexible and may be nested as much as you need. This enables you to create practically any layout you might think of. But before we discuss layouts, in the next part, we'll see how to create our custom widgets. This is also a way of putting multiple widgets on the screen, although technically we just create a single widget that consists of other widgets. And then, in the following part, we'll start our discussion of Kiwi layouts. In our application, we'll be making use of several different layouts. So, the sooner we start using them, the better. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.